You know, every son relies on his mother, but he needs his father. If a boy doesn't receive wisdom from his dad, he'll get it, just from all the wrong places. What does every son need from his father? There are five core items, and let's dive into it right here and right now. The first thing, time together, just me and my dad. There's an old book about that, just me and my dad. The little kid follows his dad around, always has that little spider. I'm not sure what that book's called, but that is something that is so darn important. I got three kids. I have an eight-year-old, I have a six-year-old, and I have a three-year-old girl. Those two boys, boy, they are growing so fast and they are picking up everything in the world. And the best thing that I can do for them, the best thing that you can do for your son or your soon to be coming son is to spend time together with just your son and enjoy that time. And you can do it in two different ways, right? You can do it in small doses. And those are super easy things. Play a quick game. I completely understand you and I, we are super busy during the day. We have our job to take care of. We have the house to take care of. We have our wife to take care of. And we have all of the different responsibilities that we shoulder every single day. So if you can just set aside a little bit of time to play a quick game with your kid, whether it's um, just something that's in and around the house or play catch for just a little bit or jump on the trampoline outside if you have one. Do something super quick, super fast and just be present with them in that moment. Try to put your phone away. I know I have a challenge with that quite a bit as well. There's so many things that distract me but if I can put my phone down, play a quick game, do something in small doses. Other things that you can do in small doses. Um, you can stop what you're listening to. I am a big proponent of always learning, always having the details and the capabilities to learn podcasts, audible books, different things like that. But stop what I'm doing and listening to my kiddo, just getting down to their level and asking them to repeat what they were saying and acknowledge what they're saying and just spend that time specifically with them in that small little dose. For me personally, and I just filmed a video about this as well, giving them enough affection. Um, a kiss in the morning as soon as they come down while they're eating breakfast, how'd you sleep, buddy? So they can know and be affirmed in the fact that dad is there, dad cares, dad's not all business. You have that one-on-one -on -one time and just a small dose with that quick kiss in the morning. And dedicated chat each night. This is something that I absolutely love. It's something that I really work to um, implement every single night is I just sit down with both of my boys. They're each in their own room now. We just moved them out. And I recap the day, recap any of the challenges that they face, any of the faults that I exhibited during the day, and I talk to them about how they enjoyed it, what their favorite part was, make sure they have some gratitude about what they did during the day, and then make sure that they have a great night's sleep, giving them that hug, giving them that kiss, ending the day no matter what happened during the day with a real good reaffirmation that it's just you and him and you are a team together so he goes to sleep with that great thought in mind. But there's more expensive, extensive things that you can do as well, right? So if you start to dive a little bit deeper into spending that dedicated quality time between just you and your son, there's a lot of things you can do. Building things. Again, this takes the ability to extract yourself from your phone or your devices and really move forward with trying to work with your kiddo. But building a fort in the basement is so much fun for your kid. You and I know that we loved building forts back in the day. And what's so cool about building a fort in particular is you learn so much about all the different facets of life. You learn mathematics, you learn angles, you learn geometry, you learn how to solve problems, you learn how weights can be affected by certain different things. Leadership style, delegation, all of the different things can be learned by simply building a fort with your son and absolutely a blast, especially if you really get into it and have a lot of fun with him. A couple other things you can do, you can help them with a big project, um, whether it's a project around the house um, or whether it's just a project that they're working on, uh, get in there and help them with that, especially if it's a school project, if they're getting a little bit older, jump in, art project, anything like that, sit next to them, ask questions, ask pointed questions, and really jump in and participate in that project with them. Lunch. Take them out to lunch. It's such an easy thing to overlook, but if you have the opportunity to take your son to lunch, whether it's just something as simple as Chick-fil-A, Freddy's, anything like that, get them to lunch, 
Keep your phone away and just enjoy that time with your kiddo for that long period during lunch. They will absolutely cherish that time that you have. Home Depot. I don't know if you have a Home Depot in your area. Probably do. Did you know that the first Saturday of every single month is the Home Depot Build Box Day? This is such a fun opportunity. Home Depot will give a little box that kids can build things with. They hand out the hammers, they hand out the um, screwdrivers, the nails, everything that you need. And you can sit there with your son and you can build this thing from scratch with them so that they can feel accomplished in building that. The things that you will learn, the things you can teach your kid with all of those different tools is so much fun. And just spending that time with them with all of the other racket that's going on at Home Depot is an absolute blast. So definitely get in on that build box. Another build box you can do, hashtag not sponsored, uh, Mark Rober has Crunch Labs. Crunch Labs is a fantastic opportunity for you to be able to have things shipped STEM type of things to be shipped to your house and your kid will absolutely love building these things with um, Mark Rober, but you being there with your son to help him build those as well. Um, we've talked about Home Depot, but you can even take a trip. If your kid's getting a little bit older, there's a fantastic book talking about how you can introduce your son into the journey of life and becoming a man. I'll put a link for the description for that book in the description below. But that book is absolutely fantastic. But can you take a small trip, a large trip with just you and your son and really experience all the things that the world outside of the monotony of your day-to-day -day has to offer? Something to definitely think about. Definitely more extensive as well. And then talk about... Um, um, you know, different things that you guys can do together. What are his visions? What are his appreciations? What are his thoughts? And things that he wants to do or accomplish? Take note of those and then jump into it or at least make a plan for it moving forward. So time together, just you and dad, that's number one. Now let's get into number two. Life skills, this is so darn important. And getting those life skills um, and cementing them for your son are going to be incredibly critical, especially in the day and age where the world is trying to pry your child in so many different directions. It's your responsibility, Dad, to get your child and point them in the direction that you want and that you value. Um, kids are not taught anymore. Um, when you think about schools, especially public schools these days, you and I went to shop class. We might have even gone to home ec class, probably because the girls were at the home ec class. Those don't exist anymore, at least not where I'm at. Shop class was something that I looked back on so darn fondly when I was in middle school and the lessons that I learned building things in shop class were absolutely fantastic and now they just don't exist. So now we have to replace that in addition to a multitude of other things. So take time to teach your kid and there's a multitude of different things that you can do. We've talked about the build box, we talked about Home Depot, but dive into some other things. Electricity, how does a circuit work? Have you dived into how a circuit works in your house with a light switch? When you turn on the light switch, how does it complete the circuit? Work through that process with your kid. There's a lots of different toys and things out there that I'll put links to in the description below that basically teach the intricacies of how circuits work. You'd be amazed at how many people, even dads that are our peers that simply have no idea how that stuff works. Having an intricate appreciation for that will build an engineering mind in your son, and that is where the opportunities will really be endless and fruitful as they move forward in their lives, especially. So electricity, how do circuits work? Motors. Now, when my son was about two years old, we got one of those Polar Express trains that just goes around in a circle on its own. It's super obnoxious, super loud. We got it for him for Christmas. But of course, like all of those type of toys, immediately it broke. And about a year later, we got it back out after Christmas and my son was super interested in figuring out what was happening. So rather than just saying, sorry, Bromley, it's broke. We can't do anything with it. I decided, you know what? I'm kind of curious myself. Let's take this thing apart. So we got the screwdrivers out. Um, we got all of the different tools that we needed and we took this thing completely apart. And we could see where the gears were attached based off the drive shaft and onto the axles of the wheels. We could see how the motor was attached. You could pull out and see the circuit board and how everything was routed through just like the electricity to see what was going on. And then of course it was broken because one of the wires had fallen off of it. So looking at this rather than again saying, gosh, this is broken, I just got on Amazon real quick. I got myself a little cheap soldering kit. 
Again, I'll have a link for that in the description below if that's something that you're interested in. And we practiced soldering on the wires, but we didn't put them in the directions they were supposed to be. So we turned on the power and we tested, all right, well, when we put this wire here, it goes backwards. When we put this wire here, the sound turns on when it's supposed to be moving forward. All of these cool little things that for me was really interesting to learn about, but think about my son, Bromley, as he was learning the specific details about how a motor, a circuit board, and all of the intricacies of that works. I mean, those are the kind of lessons that kids these days just simply don't get, and it's something that you can impart on your son specifically moving forward. Hammers, nails, saws, let them get into it, let them cut themselves a little bit, right? And let them jump into just being boys by hammering on things. Uh, those are great opportunities for them to learn how all of that stuff works and let them really jump into that. And you can teach them how the saws work, how the nails work, and how you can actually build things off of that without simply just pulling up a phone and uh, looking up a plan or anything like that. So definitely jump into hammers and nails. One of my most favorite things to do around the house is the thing that I like to do the most is cooking. I absolutely love cooking. It's my way of giving back to my wife who slaves all day long, taking care of our kids. She works her job as well. So if I can facilitate getting a good meal on the table for dinner in the evenings, that's something that I absolutely love to do. Bringing my son and of course my daughter for that matter, in on the cooking process is huge. I've got a lot of cooking videos here on my channel so you can kind of see some different recipes and things that I've done. But if you can get your kid, your boy, interested in what it takes to cook a meal, man, those are uh, tools and techniques that will serve him for a lifetime and it will help him to be a better husband supporting his wife moving forward from there. So let your kid jump up there, let your boy help you out with cooking. It's gonna be absolutely important and it's gonna be something that's gonna be really beneficial to him downstream. Changing a tire. Whether it's changing a tire on your car, which I know we don't typically get flats as much as we do, but what about changing a tire on a bike or a stroller or anything like that? Learning how to change a tire, again, one of those fundamental life skills that most people don't have these days that you and I can teach our children to do. And it's such a blast to be able to sit down there and troubleshoot and work through and get dirty changing a tire with our kid. Jump into that tying a tie. This is something my kids, they go to a charter school. We would never put them into a public school. They are in a charter school. So every Wednesday is formal day. He has to wear a tie. So I've been working to teach him how to tie that tie. We don't do clip-ons in the house. I teach him how to tie the tie and then we can keep it tied and he can use it. But understanding the feeling of a tie around his neck, how that feels when it's constricting and getting an appreciation for that at this age, boy, that's gonna serve him definitely well, especially when he's doing some more formal things moving forward in his life. Managing money. Managing money obviously is something that we all deal with on a daily basis. And there are so many of us, our peers out there, that simply have no appreciation of how money is managed. There's a fantastic book called Smart Money, Smart Kids by Dave Ramsey and his daughter Rachel Cruz. Great book talking about how to introduce money to your sons and your daughters. And the biggest thing that he talks about is you give money, you save money, and you spend money. I'll have a whole dedicated uh, video specifically talking about money with kids, but in particular, start by providing them with a commission, as Dave Ramsey calls it. It's not necessarily chores. Have specific jobs that are above and beyond what they do on a normal basis that you can pay them for. And then each time they put that in there, they can have a give folder, a save folder, and a spend folder. And they should basically be dividing those up pretty much equally at this point in time so that they can start that concept of saving. And then I also have a high yield savings account that I have on the side for them. So if they get birthday money or they get an extra um, you know, windfall of cash, 20, 30, 50 bucks, I toss that in there and I show them how it's growing in interest every single month as that's coming through. So money's a huge one. One that's incredibly important for these life skills in addition to money is how to treat a woman with respect. This is so darn important and it starts with you and me. How can you and I treat our wives? Remember the woman that we fell in love with, that we dated, that we got on our knee to propose to? That woman that we fell in love with, how do we treat her today? How do we treat her when we're in the monotony of the day, when our kid is challenging the heck out of us? Our sons watch that, they pick up on that, and they will replicate that directly with her tomorrow or even later today because they've seen how we've treated her. 
and especially when they have a girlfriend and when they are in a marriage, they will replicate that as well. So treat your wife with respect whenever possible. I know we can't do it every single day. I know I sure as heck can't. When I make a mistake, when I treat her poorly, when I snap, I acknowledge that in the moment. I try to cool off, I take a deep breath, and then when the moment is right, I apologize to her in front of the kids, and I talk to the kids during my bedtime chat in the evenings, and I say, listen, the way I treated your mom today, that was not fair of her, that was not fair of me to do that to her, and I made a mistake, and I apologize to you for you seeing that. I'm trying to be better, I'm trying to be more godly, and I'm trying to perform for that by just apologizing to your son and apologizing to your son in front of your wife, that will reset the barrier, reset that foundation, and your son will know that you are human too and that you are working to be better every single time. Um, doing house fixes. We had a counter break uh, the other day. We had a cabinet break the other day. And when that broke, my wife, of course, was pushing the trash into the pull-out um, drawer too heavily and the whole thing just broke completely off rather than getting mad about it. Take a deep breath. All right, cool. This is an opportunity for us, me and Bromley, to figure out how to fix this broken drawer. So we spent 30, 40, 50 minutes and went through and it was a learning experience for both of us. And now my son knows how to use a screwdriver, a drill, and how to shore up that thing. And we had that great experience together and we helped mom out, right? So those are the kind of things doing those little fixes around the house. The point of all of this, of all the specific life skills that you're trying to teach your kids, and especially your son, is when you integrate your son into that process, it's gonna take three, four, five times longer than you expect and that you want, and you're gonna get so darn frustrated. I know I do every time. But keep in mind, you're not doing it to finish it fast. You're doing it to teach your son a lesson and to integrate them into what happens around the house. So by the virtue of the fact that it takes longer, is just extending that time that you have with you and your son to teach him those life skills that he's going to take with him for the rest of his life. So something to absolutely keep in mind and think about and something that I will definitely do. So that's number two, but here's number three, philosophy. Dive into a philosophical appreciation and approach for your son so that he will have a more um, appreciation of what a philosophical life is like, what a moral life is like, um, and give them the direction with solid answers to the needs and the spiritual conversations that they have in life. Um, and primarily, the, the best way that I have started doing this is I get all of my kids into church. I have a, a confession to make. I haven't been to church in my 42 years until about four or five months ago. I never felt I had a need to go. Um, my father and my mother were very moral people. They never had a, an interest in going to church, and I never really knew anything about it growing up. So we did a good job, and I just thought, well, gosh, I, didn't, I don't need to go to church. I, I turned out okay. Um, but what I've quickly found is no matter how moral you are, you go to church on Sunday, the lessons that you learn from the sermon, from the preacher, or from your kids who are in Sunday school, those lessons are things that you don't think about during the day, and they're the lessons of the Bible that really help to reinforce the way that you're living on a daily basis. It's so profound, it's so amazing. So teaching your kids a philosophy of life through going through a religious practice is absolutely huge. So get them in a church if you have one close to you, and I promise you it will help to improve upon their approach to life. You will leave in your son what you live out in your home. So model that godly behavior. Pursue Jesus and what he did in his life, and you, by modeling that behavior, will pull your son along and up that path so that when he leaves the house, he'll be much better off as a result of that. Perfect. Now, if you're a dad, thank you for listening to this. Um, and if you're going to be a dad, I know a lot of people are thinking, oh my gosh, I just found out I'm having a son. What the heck am I going to do? I have so many lessons that I need to learn. So thank you for joining me today. If you are going to be a new dad and you're a little bit nervous about that, I put together a two-month survival guide for new dads. So the, all the things that you need to know or that you think you might have to um, accomplish in those first two months, I put into a nice 
easy guide so that you can be able to reference that before baby comes and in that time after baby comes. There's lots of good references in there. It's completely free. Grab it in the link in the description below. If you have any questions about it, you can uh, put a comment in the description below and we can talk about it. But anyway, grab that if you are interested. And now on to number four, conviction. You know, there are so many different things, as I said earlier, that are pulling at the edges of our sons, whether it's social media, YouTube, the teachers, the coaches, the friends that they interact with, all of those different things are pulling at their psyche and trying to draw their attention and trying to suck their uh, values into their side of the world. From my perspective, I want to be the one that's instilling the values into my son and I want to avoid at all costs any of those other values that are being inculcated into my son that I don't agree with. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be getting some of those other values. It means that I want to be the one that's providing both perspectives so that I can ensure that they are aligned with my values and my wife's values as we move forward. You know, when I was growing up, my father and my mother in a different time in the early 80s, they didn't talk about politics. They didn't talk about money. They didn't talk about problems or strugglers. They never discussed any of that in the house when I was growing up. And that was a different time, right? Because there was no internet. So there wasn't much to pull me away from the values that they set, even though they weren't talking about it. But from my perspective today, that just simply isn't the case anymore. Today, your son is going to be pulled in those directions and they're going to hear things at school and they're gonna hear things if they're watching videos or if they're engaging in activities in and around their community that are designed to pull their values, to inculcate them in things that are not aligned with you, no matter where you sit on these issues. So you need to be able to fight back with those. And the way that I've found is to simply be much more direct about it. So yeah, we talk about politics in our household. We talk about money. We talk about the problems and the struggles and the challenges that we face. And we are forthright with our kids, to a degree, of course, based on their age, so that they know these are the values that I espouse, these are the values my wife and your mother espouse, and we talk about those details in particular so that they know where we sit. Um, for better or worse, I think that's something that they need to know. So when I am listening to a podcast with the kids and they start jumping into something where I say they're trying to um, suck your brains out, is what I tell the kids, oh, I can tell that they are trying to uh, talk about how Critical race theory is something that really needs to be pushed and you should feel bad about the color of your child's skin. I stop it right there and I talk about why content of carrier, character is more important than the color of skin, that we are colorblind in this house. And I talk about why that's more important than some of these other issues and things that are being foisted upon our children. So that's something incredibly important to me and that's something that I think you probably just need to dive into and be more convicted in that as you move forward um, and be more overt about that. Finally, number five, your son just wants his dad's heart. He wants to know how much you love him. He wants to know how much you appreciate him. It's very different from mom's love, affection, and appreciation and dad's affirmation and appreciation for the things that he has accomplished. Mom will provide those things, but when the dad provides those in particular, especially for his son, it holds a heck of a lot more weight simply by virtue of the fact that you are both men or soon to be men together. So give that um, opportunity to your son and be loved by um, your son or show love to your son, show that he can be affirmed um, and give him your blessing when it's appropriate and then be disciplined when it's appropriate as well. But when you have the opportunity to say, I love you, I'm proud of you, you are really good at doing this. And my favorite, my father, God bless his soul, he died um, when my middle kiddo was just born um, way too early. But I can forever remember every time that I was doing something and I wasn't up to par on it, whether it was doing something at school, whether it was learning how to drive, whether it was even just doing a sport, he would always sit me down and said, you know what? Everything in life rests on the big E. 
the big E, the word E for effort. If you can, Ryan, sit down and put in a little bit more effort, you will succeed a significant amount more. So I would hear that from him. I would uh, take those values to heart and I would work harder. And then he would come back to me and would say, Ryan, I'm really proud of you. You put the effort in for that and look at what you've done as a result of that effort that you put in. And I, of course, am now providing that same talking point to my two sons. So proud of you for putting in that effort. You know, you need to put more effort into this. Effort is the thing that will allow you to escape where you are and to do better and to accomplish more. So those are the five things that I think that every dad should be able to work with and talk to about their sons, but I'm sure there's plenty more. What do you do to help your sons do better, be better, and improve in their lives? Put some comments in the description below. I know it's you and me today, but there's a lot of other dads out there that are in our position that are trying to improve, trying to be better fathers, trying to be better husbands, and trying to do better for the world financially giving and otherwise. So let's keep this community going. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got tons of other videos. I've got a video right here that might be beneficial to you. Come on back. There's lots of great information. I would love to continue um, having these conversations with you and join this community. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for joining me today and have a good day.